Hello and welcome to our blog. I am James Cuervo, Senior Trainer and Support here at Digital Drafting Systems. Today's topic is one that several people have asked for, and that is a follow-up on our Creating Lines with Text in Revit. In this case, we will be creating an arc with text. For this blog, it will be very helpful if you have done and understood our previous blog mentioned herein. The templates that we will be using is the general model line based template, just like in our previous blog. Are we ready? Let's begin. As you can see, we have several items that have been defined here. Okay. First of all, we went ahead and created these lines here, which are our reference lines. Okay. So we can then go ahead and draw our dimension for the arc. This particular dimension for the arc is going to define the total extent of the arc itself. Okay, but we want the arc to be able to spread from the middle. In order to do that, we created a secondary arc uh, angle, which is called a half arc. Okay, and let's go ahead and see how these two actually um, are behaving with one another. Looking here at the family types of parameters, we see that we've created the arc angle covered, which is right here, okay, is set to 90 degrees. It's a default value. Then we went ahead and created the arc ha or half arc, which is right here. This one is controlled by a particular formula, which is indicating that what we're doing really is going to take the arc angle covered divided by 2, and that's the value of the half arc, okay? You will notice, though, that uh, we did not assign the half arc parameter to both of the angles here. The reason for that is because if I I'll go ahead and assign it to this particular item here, it will over constrain it. Also, if we went ahead and created this as a continuous uh, dimension and made it equal, it will also over constrain it. So we decided to make it this way. This is the only way we found right now that does not over constraint our particular arc. Great. So once we have the arc defined and the half arc defined, we went ahead and defined the actual arc, the actual arc lines that are going to be going between these two lines, creating the full angle of the arc. And that is actually going to be controlled via its radius, which is right here, okay, for the line that's going to have the embedded uh, text. For the uh, reference arc that is right here, that is going to allow us to position the um, text at a, an object that we can actually go ahead and dimension to without over constraining our design. And we also then created a couple of things. Once we created the arc array with its center being right here, okay, what we did then is we subtracted a little space on the actual hatch right here and gave it a little bit of an offset, if you can see it here. By, let's go ahead and select the arc here, and you'll see that we're actually defining the arc line right there, which is in blue, which is going to the the, the uh, reference arc, which is right there, which is in green. It's actually defining and, by the way, locking that particular dimension so we know that this is always going to stay in the middle of this line here, which will then also align, be aligned to or with this particular line up here by bringing it down to this area and the, first assigning this particular value to this one. That will automatically go ahead and lock those two in. Okay. Further, uh, we also, uh, sorry, it's not this one in particular. It's actually another one that we're going to assign in a couple of moments, okay, which is going to be, let's go ahead and assign it anyway. Let's select this item right here. And the one that we want to assign to this one is going to be the radius arc right here, okay automatically places it and we are all set. This is actually defining to what? To that green reference arc. So we have that arc defined, or rather the radius defined there. Okay, we also can see that because this is set to about a half an inch uh, distance between the actual array item, which is the these this blue one right uh, there, 
okay, and the green, we need to dimension or dimension the array to this particular line. So what we did is we defined it as the array radius. Notice that it's not the arc radius, it's the array radius, which already is actually subtracting that half inch from there. Okay, and that's actually shown right here. Array radius is equal to eight, and eight feet, five and one half inches. The arc radius is, the, the, this particular array radius, excuse me, is the arc radius right there minus one half inch. And the reason we're able to actually combine these two, even though it says radius, is because we're actually looking at dimensions, not angles. Okay, you can't combine uh, uh, lineal lineal dimensions. You can only combine uh, angle, angular dimensions or lineal dimensions together, not mix them up like that, uh, one with the other. Continuing on, we have now defined, of course, as we said earlier, we defined the arrays for the arcs. The This arc right here, we defined the, uh, the uh, uh, radius, sorry, for the uh, array, the radius for the uh, controlling um, arc that is a reference arc, and then the actual line that's going to be on top of it. Okay, all we really have to do at this point is go ahead and select the uh, a particular radius that defines the uh, line that we want to align and may have embedded with um, the uh, text by assigning the arc radius to it also. Okay, that ensures that all of this is going to be controlled by the radius arc, keeping them together. As you can see also, we've actually man, uh, gone ahead and gave it a lock dimension, okay, for the offset distance from the actual arc uh, beginning, and a similar dimension for the arc end here, also locked. So it's going to be persistent, 2.60 and 2.46 on, on one and the other side. Once that's all done, Okay, we are now ready to go ahead and see how this works. So let's go ahead and to the family types and let's go ahead and flex it a little bit. Let's go ahead and shrink this up a little bit here. And let's go ahead and say that the angle is not going to be 90 degrees. Let's say the angle is going to be 120 degrees. Okay, let's go ahead and set the apply. And as you can see, everything is actually breaking from the middle. Okay, the arcs are being, uh, are being contained and uh, um, maintained its alignment because of these radius dimensions that we've got here. The arc continues to work from the center because of the formula that we created that says that the arc angle covered will be halved so we can go ahead and um, expand it evenly from the center uh, reference line right here. All right, so with that, we have then covered the creation of a arc array with bed, uh, sorry, an arc line that has text embedded into it. I hope that his, this has been helpful. Please remember that you should take a look at a line with text in Revit blog that we have here in order to get a better and more complete picture, okay, of how a lot of these things are done. With that, this has been James Cuervo with Digital Drafting Systems saying thank you very much for watching. Please keep the, com the comments coming. We are more than happy to answer all questions that might uh, arise. Have a great day. Be safe. Stay healthy. Thank you very much.